What's good, YouTube? Mr. Man Joe here, and today I want to talk to you guys about my run in the Necropolis. Now, I took the Titania path followed by the Guardian path just to get the dust, plus that's the easiest path from my understanding. And I used Agon for this, a rank 5 ascended sick 200 Agon with a maxed out 5 star black panther relic. It's actually pretty good, man. The damage that relic was doing in this is crazy, as well as what Agon was doing, as well as the bleeds when he's got his furies up. If he got hit, he's doing like 15k crits. 40k crits around there is pretty crazy um yeah the run itself was not that bad we're gonna get into it right now so let's start off with the titania fight for this first fight you have titania she can be a bit overwhelming at first but she's actually easy to me she was at least you just gotta wait out her haymaker and that can happen most of the time but i had to use 11 level 2 revives and about four to five level four potions i just kept healing at first i was like man this is gonna be hard but actually it's not even that difficult once you get the hang of it so basically what you want to do is push her into her corner you can do that by hitting into her block after she dashes back and she starts holding block right after as well as um waiting on her haymakers and whatnot you can try to parry at the start i didn't do that there see as she dashes back you hit her into her block she does it again. I hit it to block. Now be careful because because sometimes she'll come into you like that. If I don't went in there, you gotta wait for her to start blocking. Then you can go in. Should be safe. If, if it's not, it's because the AI is playing tricks on you, I guess. But uh, yeah, this, this is not that bad of a fight once you get the hang of it. I don't know. Depending on your skill level, you might struggle at first. You might not even want to do this. But anyways, let's get back and on. Move on to the next one. Uh, now up next is Vision Arc, because I had to use seven level two revives, mainly because he kept using his SP3 on me because of power gains. Now America Chavez apparently is really good for this. I didn't know with her heavy attack, when she has a purple icon thing, it slows down the opponent's power gain, and when they get three or more, it starts taking away their power. She's really good for this fight, but I didn't have her. I had to use Vision Arc. I had to use Agon against Vision Arcus. Up next is Omega Setno. She's super easy. Once you get Agon ramped up to 150 plus, because it'll have true accuracy, which uh, counters auto evade and auto block. And Omega Sentinel loves the auto blocking this. You want to dex our SP1 because it's. You could dex it. I'm not good at it, so I never do. I just block it. But the SP2, if you, bra if you bait it out. You have to dex that beam, otherwise while blocking you still get to incinerate on you. I don't even know how much the damage is. Also, do not use your SP2 against her because she'll regen like 9,000 per second from what I've seen. I have I didn't use it in this because I know she regens from it, from bleed. But uh Yeah, just do this. Look at that crit from the relic. Look at these crits, man. Pretty much, yeah. Once I got ramped up. You'll get them ramped up enough here. It's an easy fight. You just gotta bait out the SP1 if you're good at dexing it, otherwise just block it. Otherwise, the SP2, you have to dex the beam, otherwise you're gonna get incinerate. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this fight. She loves the auto block, so keep that in mind. She will auto block your specials as well. Up next is Airwalker. Surprisingly, I only used uh, eight level two revives and th uh, three level four potions. Now, you wanna stay close to him so he can throw his specials. That's how you fight Airwalker. He's got the little gray timer under his health, as you can see. And if you don't knock him down before that health, uh, the timer expires, he will get his Galactus buff thing. I forgot the name of it. You're going to see what happens when he does in this. Basically, he's going to regen a lot, and then he's going to uh, become unstoppable. Right here, I don't knock him down in time. And he's regening 24,000, 18,000. And if he's just doing this, you're just going to want to quit because he's regenerating more than what I can handle. And it's, if he throws his SP3, he's going to get that again. So, yeah, don't do that. Um, up next is Captain Britain. She has reverse controls like crazy in this fight. I had to use 10 level 2 revives for this fight because of the reverse controls, otherwise it's an easy fight. 
Maybe you want to bring somebody who's reverse control immune for this fight. But whenever you, uh, I forgot what the reverse controls happens. Like how that activates. I don't remember, honestly. I'm sure somebody in the comment section will let you guys know. I just know it's an annoying fight with reverse controls. Up next, I ended up facing this guy. He shows up. He showed up twice for my run. You're going to want to knock him down. I mean, not knock him down. You're going to want to throw stuff at him. Like, just hit him. You got a timer. Once the great timer expires, uh, he just kills himself, and then you don't get a boost from it. Also, for whatever reason, I didn't record Wicked and Cycle Man because I forgot, apparently. So I took eight level two revives for Wicked and then six level two revives for Cycle Man. Those are super easy fights. For uh, Wiccan, whatever you do, bait out the SP2 because his SP1, the lower his health is, the greater his regen is. And at one point, he's regening 31,000 per second. And Cycle Man, he's got a little prompts you got to do, like block an attack, uh, whiff an attack, knock him down and whatnot. It's a super easy fight. But for this fight, you're going to want to, if you're using Aegon at least, you're going to want to use your SP2 to have the bleed to help knock down his health. And then you got challenges to do in this fight, otherwise he's indestructible until you do him. If you don't know what to do, just pause the game, scroll up, and then they'll tell you what challenges you have to do. Guardian is up next. This is an easy fight. He just auto blocks a lot, but then uh, Aegon would be ramped up completely. I had to use seven level two revives and two level four potions against Guardian. Now, for whatever reason, I did not record Valkyrie. Now, for the Wiccan, Psycho Man, and Valkyrie fights, I was at work when I did them, so I forgot to record them. But yeah, um, uh, seven level two revives and four or two level four potions for Guardian, and then ten level two revives and two level five potions. Now, for Valkyrie, you she will not lose any bars of power. She doesn't have a passive Pierce on her. So you need that on her. The ways you can get that is either have her hit into your block or at the start of the fight, don't even hit her yet. Just hit into her block to get like at least 20. So that way when she, whenever she throws her specials, they throw, uh, she uses her power. Otherwise, if she has none, her personal pierce buffs don't matter at all. It's got to be the passive ones. If she has none, she's not going to use any power and she could throw specials back to back to back. And then the more pierce buffs she has, she uh, a lot of block damage you're gonna take from her. But yeah, she, she's a super easy fight as well once you get the hang of it. So up next, we got Red Guardian. This is probably the easiest fight. Nah, to me personally, it's the second easiest fight. And the easiest fight on this path, we're gonna talk about later in the video. But for Red Guardian, it's it's just a regular Red Guardian fight. He likes to block a lot, but you got egg on, so you know your hits are unblockable, so none of that matters. Um, I use two level two revives and one level four potion. It's it's very doable to get a solo. I wasn't able to because I'm not good at dexing his SP one. Whenever you get rooted, oh yeah, I forgot to tell you. See the little the timer? It says one twenty right on the t uh, under Guardian's health. When that changes colors to like a burgundy color, whenever the opponent throws a special, you will become rooted. And for this Red Guardian fight, when he's under 40% health, he will become unblockable. You're gonna see that in this video at some point. You won't see the rooted part, but there's the unblockable because he has less than 40% health. He just becomes unblockable. I'm assuming it's that great timer to the, next to the letter M. I can't remember. I just know I kept going unblockable. And then when you become rooted, yep, it's that great timer. And when you become rooted, it's kind of annoying if you're not good at dexing it. Up next is Sam Wilson. It's an easy fight. Just de uh, bait out the SP1. That's all you got to do. Same thing. When they become rooted, when the timer goes down, I almost forgot to record this fight, which is why his health is so low. But at the time of this recording, just bait out to SP1 and then just fight him like normal. That's all you got to do. Do not hit into his block because if you do, while he's blocking, you'll put ruptures on you right there, as you can see. Doesn't do a lot of damage, but I think a lot of more ruptures, the crazier the damages or something like that. I don't know. I just know all I know is don't hit into his block and bait out to SP1. Okay, so for Dragon Man, I use seven level two revives. This fight is an easy fight. If you let him throw his specials, he'll get rid of his power gain. He is stunned immune. 
Also, if you're using Aegon, um, you could throw the SP3 to stun him, but if he has that green icon right there activated and you throw your SP3, you won't get what you call it. You won't stun him, and every five, every five crits you do, he'll get a gray uh, stun icon, and then after the fifth one, he'll um, become stun immune. So right here, he had the green one activated, and then that SP3 critted him, so it reset it for him. So uh, he did not get stunned. You got to keep that in mind. How do you sev? I could use less. This is an easy fight. Mainly because he got to his SP3. And if he does that, he becomes unblockable, unstoppable. And yeah, he can be annoying. Up next is Captain America Affinity War. This fight is the easiest fight in the whole thing on this path. Now, if you're probably wondering why I use more revives, then, um, or maybe it's about the same. I can't remember. But basically, I use one level one revive. Three level two revives and one level five uh, potions, but it's a super easy fight. Even when you're rooted, his specials are easy to dex. Try to bait out to SP two. Don't take the block damage from it because it can be nasty. From what I've heard, I've never had that happen to me because I always dex it. But I've heard people saying that he'll deal a lot of block damage to you if you don't. But other than that, it's a super easy fight. Oh yeah. Also, um. The note he has is, you know, his SIG ability for those abilities he has. Basically, it rotates. Right now, it's a tech, whatever the tech one for a SIG level is. That's what he gets. And right here, he's got the mutant. And when you get the skill, he will shrug off the debuffs, no matter what it is. Also, when you parry like that, he'll get his uh, charges. And when he has five of them and you hit into him, or hit his blockers, if something happens, I forgot. But basically, you, you get a 100% concussion and then... Aegon becomes regular champ, like none of his abilities act, uh, activate while that uh, concussion is activated. And finally, we got Nova. 10 level 2 revives and 3 level 4 potions. I had to use 10 because this dude kept throwing his SP3 against me and then he'll go unblockable with his SP2. I'm not good at dexing his SP2. His SP1 I can dex, sometimes I'll get hit with it. But yeah, this is a super easy fight no matter what. Just fi uh, I was gonna say just figure it out <laughs> but uh, yeah sometimes like you've seen at the start of this fight I'll throw my heavy and they'll back away that happened to me a lot in my run like I don't know why but it happens they'll back away and I'll be just close enough but I won't hit them and then they'll go in for a combo and then yeah it's sad times <laughs> but yeah this fight's not that bad as you can see I dex all that besides that last hit but I would get hit with that sometimes when he's unblockable. I don't know how he gets his charges, but apparently he gets it whenever Aegon hits him. I don't really read the note. I just went in. And if you get too many of those Nova Forces things, you start to degen a lot. And I dexed that the second one I did it, but uh, Heimdall saved me. But yeah, it's a somewhat easy fight. It's just annoying with the power gain. If he didn't have his power gain... Be straight up easy. This is where he takes me out. That was about 99 revives to get to the Grandmaster for me personally. That's actually not bad. I was aiming for around realistically to do my path 100 to 120 for me. I was like, yeah, that's that's a, re a realistic number for myself. But yeah, I would not be fighting the Grandmaster in this video because I will be uploading a completely separate video where I take him on. And you guys will see the full uh, fight in that video, unedited and everything, so you can hear my reactions live. Not live, but you know when I'm actually going through the fight, I'm gonna record me fighting while I do that, so you guys can hear the reactions. I don't got a camera yet, but um, so you can't see my reactions. But yeah. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, if you thought found that it was helpful and whatnot, um, thank you for watching. God bless. Jesus loves you as well. Don't ever forget that. Um. I love you too. Appreciate you guys. But yeah, the next video will most likely be me taking on this Grandmaster because I can't do nothing else in this game that I can make content on. Unless I'm talking about something. But anyways, thanks for watching, everybody. And as always, until next time.